Rafe, on behalf of the Canadian Mental Health Association, our branch is right across the province, the volunteers, the staff, and the people that we serve. We'd like to present you with the 2009 Mental Health Voices Award, and it's for those champions who have the courage to speak out and tell their story. Well, Beth, thank you very much. It's a lovely award. Uh, I'm sure that there are others more deserving of it, but uh, I accept it very proudly. Uh, you know, uh, when you work in the uh, mental health field, as you have for so long, and, and I've done sort of an, uh, in an amateur sort of way, uh, you really get so involved that something like this brings you back and say, you know, well, maybe in all that you have done some good somewhere down the line, and that's a nice feeling. And I want to thank you and the BC branch of the Canadian Mental Health Association for, uh, for presenting it to me. This is kind of a funny story. One day I decided I had cancer of the liver. And I went to my Columbia Medical Dictionary and sure enough I had it. So I phoned up my doctor to get him to help and the, the gatekeeper said, well, why do you want to see Mel? And I said, well, because I've got cancer of the liver. And there was a long silence as you might expect. And she said, well, he can't see you today. I said, oh yes, he can, I'm coming right up there. So I sat there and waited till he was through, and he came out and he said, what the hell are you doing here? And I said, well, Mel, I've got cancer of the liver. And he kind of <laughs> looked at me funny. He said, well, all right, let's go and have a look. So he sort of probed around a little bit. He says, no, you dumb dumb, you've got some gallstones there. That's what's, no, I said, I've got dying of cancer of the liver. So he gave me a rabbit chop out of the ribs. And he said, did that hurt? And I said, well, I wouldn't want you to do it all day long. It was no big deal. He said, well, i got to do it again. He whapped, looked up at the screen. He said, there, you're, you're okay. I said, what do you mean I'm okay? He said, well, you had uh, one of your gallstones was lodged in the, in the entrance to the gallbladder. And that's what was causing you pain. And I said to him, you're lying to me and I don't know why. And he said, uh, how long ago was it that your daughter was killed? And I said, what the hell's that got to do with cancer of the liver? He said, I want to ask you some questions. He asked me two or three more questions, and I just broke into uncontrollable sobs, could not stop crying. And, and he held me what much as you might hold a child and, and just let me sob. And Then he explained to me about serotonin and uh, all of those various things. And He obviously had a great comprehension of the problem, which most uh, GPs didn't have at that time. And He said, we'll find some medicine, and we're going to get you back okay. And uh, Lo and behold, lucky, lucky me, the first medicine we tried, uh, it worked. And so there we were. I went from having cancer of the liver to depression in one easy step. Well, of course, it is get help. But I would preface that by saying get your mate on side. Get your mate to understand what you're going through. That's one of the hardest things. Uh, you know, your wife or your boyfriend or your husband or whatever it may be, as often as not, uh, probably in defense of the fact that he has probably has problems too, but he or she will say, oh, listen, I, I get depressed, but I'll go see a doctor all the time. So you've got to get them on side because without them, it's very difficult. But the main message, of course, is see a doctor and see a doctor as quickly as you can. And if you're not satisfied with the way the doctor has handled it, get another doctor. This is a very, very serious illness, but it is, it's controllable. And you, you can get the kind of medicines as I have that put you right back to where you were. So there's, there's a great payoff in going to the right side of a doctor. And I think uh, people ought to be aware of the fact that the chances are almost certain that either they or one of their family is going to have a mental health difficulty before they uh, uh, hop the twig, as my mother used to say. And that's not the way to go until mental health is part of health, period, and is treated just like any other kind of health, then we're going to be short of money and, and need people to help. Even with the improvements that have been made with the medical profession and so on, if physically ill people were treated by the system as mentally ill people are, they'd be storming the legislature. There's no question about that. I think in a strange sort of way, it's easier for somebody in public life to do so because you sit down and think about it more. You're in touch with people every single day of your life and you hear these things happen. I think the difficult thing to do is to admit it to your family and your loved ones in the first place. And that's where it's difficult. Uh, and once you've done that uh, and you, you get a sort of a confidence in people saying to you, well, good, I'm glad you're getting help, it becomes easier and easier to talk about it. So for me, I don't want it to appear that as I went through some great sort of pain and suffering in coming out, 
Uh, I came out really, and I knew I was always knew I was going to, uh, because it was the right thing to do, and uh, it was no more complicated than that.